Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to uh, get into uh, the cunningly devised fable, you know, of a god of the underworld and a uh, place where uh, spirits are sent to be tormented, you know, uh, by the spiritual demon Satan, you know, or, you know, by uh, demonic spirits, you know, for eternity. Um, I'm going to start here in the book of Second Peter, the fourth chapter in the second verse, it says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. See, and this is why we have to continuously uh, do these videos, which our people look at it as hating, you know, as a form of uh, division. But this is the job of those who were sent, you know, by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering, in hopes that the elect, who may even be amongst these other camps, you see, may, um, as the scriptures say, pre adventure be converted and turn to the truth. Now, the scriptures say, and this is a prophecy, that the time would come where they would not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And a lot of our people who left, you know, the Christian church want to hold, you know, to the God of this world and link it into, uh, this thing of ours, you know, as pertaining to being an Israelite. And that happened before, you know, back then, a lot of those wicked, you know, Jews of the circumcision, you know, took to the traditions of, you know, the, the Egyptians, the Sumerians, you know, the Babylonians, um, the Greeks and the Romans and added it to the Holy Scriptures. OK, which is uh, something we ought not to do. All right. Because when you go line upon line, precept upon precept, you get understanding of, you know, the most high God, Yahweh. All right. Through his son, Yahweh Shai on what he's going to do how judgment will be played out, you know, what's going to happen at a second coming, you know, and so forth. Okay. So it says, and they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables, which you see here in the uh, NLT, they will reject the truth and chase after myths. And we're starting to see the uh, concept of an eternal damnation, hell, you know, you even have uh, those individuals in Mississippi saying that, you know, the bottomless pit is a place, you know, where evil spirits dwell and Satan was there and all of that, you know, which these are the fables that our people would turn to in the latter days just to oppose themselves um, and come against the truth. Now, when you look up this word fables, because this is a prophecy. Okay, so marvel not that you see these different opinions. Marvel not at the incredulity. Okay. And incredulity is unbelief. Now the word fables is mythos. Okay. Mythos. And that's what a myth is. A speech, word, saying, narrative, story, a true narrative, fiction, a fable, an invention, a falsehood. Okay, and we're going to show you that gods of the underworld are falsehoods. Okay, and when you go into the Bible, Satan himself is in the heavens. Okay, he wasn't cast out of heaven, as a lot of these people like to associate Isaiah, the 14th chapter, <laughs> with the spiritual demon Satan, where it talks about Lucifer. No, that's speaking of the rulers on earth being cast out of their rulership. But we'll get um, to those things if the spirit allows but these things of inventions and falsehood, okay? Um, Second Peter's one and sixteen, 
the fiction of the Jews, theosophist, which you have all of those philosophies back here today, and Gnostics, especially concerning emanations and order of aeons, are called fables. So the same thing you see happening in these times are the same things that happened back then. Okay, and we were warned not to give heed to these old wives' fables. All right, First Timothy 4 and 7, but refuse profane and old wives' fables because as Timothy was uh, one of the pillars, he was sent, he was built up by Paul and sent to the church of Ephesus. Paul was warning him of the things that he was going to encounter. Okay, and the concept of a God of the underworld, okay, um, goes back, okay, to uh, Babylon, Egypt, and so forth, as we'll show you, okay. Now, uh, let's get this in First Peter uh, 1 and 16. It says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you, to po uh, made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. Okay, so we're not associating these fables, all right, as we're teaching you about, you know, the death, burial, and resurrection, uh, you know, the prophecies concerning the second coming of the Lord, you know, uh, Armageddon. We don't add the fables, you know, of a God of the underworld and all of this other crap, eternal damnation. Um, and the English language itself, you know, words like eternity, everlasting, you know, um, within the context of where, where it's being said must be taken into account because there's a lot of symbolism. There's a lot of allegories used. All right. Uh, to trip people up. That they may stumble Okay and this is the doing of Yahweh Bashmi Shai. This is not the doing of man The Lord wants particular people to be Set up to stumble at these particular things This is why we have to go into the volume of the book To get the understanding of these things So we don't follow these cunningly devised fables Such as a god of the underworld Now when you deal with Hades Okay or the god of the underworld which when you go into the uh, New Testament, okay, in the Bible period, you have three words for hell, all right? You have uh, Sha'al or Sha'al, okay, which really is the grave, all right? Or it can be symbolic for a uh, hellish condition on earth in a sense of captivity, as we'll show you when Jonah was in the belly of the uh, fish that was likened unto hell. OK, we'll show you these things. And then when you get the New Testament, OK, hellfire or hell could either be. Uh, what's the word? Ga'ena. OK, which goes back to the Valley of Hinnom, symbolic of a place south of Jerusalem where, uh, you know, things were burnt. It was a hellish condition. Symbolic of the, the, the future judgment that's coming and the future judgment that's coming, according to the Bible, is via, you know, fire by war and the fire that's going to come from the chariots. And the judgment is going to be played out on earth. There is no judgment in an afterlife or in an underworld. Okay? Or you have this term Hades. Okay? Which, um, when this Bible was translated, okay, this is why you have to um, have teachers, all right, to teach you the, 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 the value of the book. To be able to discern, all right, because when you go into the Greek in the blue letter, you'll see this term here, Hades. Now, Hades, according to various Christian denominations, is the place or state of departed spirits. Borrowing the name Hades, the Greek god of the underworld, it is often associated with the Jews concept, all right, of Sheol, all right, and this is what we're going to go into, or Sheol, as it says there. Um, but we'll go here real quick, okay? And uh, as you can see here, the different gods of the underworld, okay? Now, um, this is all mythology, okay? It says, um, Because you want to brush up on your mythology This is not about wanting to Miniature the muster of your own Not at all But this is giving you The different gods of the underworld Okay The 
as it says here, I believe it's kind of blotted out, but the 10 gods of death in the underworld from around the world. Okay. And um, the first one that comes up is this Greek god Hades. All right. Now, I want any of you Israelites who believe in this concept to show me, all right, in the prophets where we were warned about this particular god. Okay. Hades. The Greek god and goddesses. Realms, okay. Uh, religion, Greek gods and goddesses. Realms, god of the underworld and death. Family, all right. Full brother of Zeus, all right. The apostle Tahar just brought that out. The king of Mount Olympus, the firstborn son of Cronus and Rhea. Fun fact Hades won his realm after drawing lots with his brothers. Okay, as soon as you step inside, the door slams shut behind you and locks itself. Apparently, you're here for the duration of Gala, like it or not. Okay, so you uh, you would be tormented for eternity by the god of the underworld, and that's Hades. So when you go into the Bible, okay, let's just type in hell real quick. I'm just going to type in hell. You're going to notice, okay, that... Let's see here. Acts 2 and 27. Let's see what the word is going to be here. There has a lot left my soul in hell. Okay. Boom. Let's read the scripture first. Acts 2 and 27. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Now this was a prophecy by David speaking of Yahweh Shai. I believe it's in Psalms, the 18th chapter. And we'll get that. But as you can see, Hades was added here as this was translated. Okay, but this is a Greek god. Okay, Hades is the name of Hades or Pluto's god of the lower regions. Okay, the, in biblical Greek, it is associated with Orcus and the infernal regions, Dante's Inferno and all of these various different things. Okay, but as you can see, Hades, all right, is a Greek god of the underworld. Okay, now when you go to the, the uh, prophecy where uh, David quoted this, Psalms 8, no, that ain't it, it's, it's a lucky. Psalms, okay. Yep, Psalm 16 and 10. Okay, because we know David passed away. Okay, he didn't raise from the dead. The one that was raised from the dead was Yahweh Shai. So this was a prophecy of Yahweh Shai. Okay, and we know damn sure Yahweh Shai, okay, didn't go to the lower regions of hell and chilling with Hades. Okay. <laughs> This is Psalm 16 and 10. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Okay? Now, when you look up this word hell, okay, in the uh, Hebrew, again, Sha'awa, Sheol, underworld, grave, hell, pit, underworld. All right? The abode of the dead, place of no return wicked sent there now all of these things were added because we know in the holy scriptures or right, as we're getting ready to show you whenever you type in hell all right it's just dealing with the grave or a hellish condition so what we'll do is type in hell and read a few scriptures that deal with hell okay as it says here as you can see here's uh, uh psalms 22 and 6 the sorrows of hell can pass me about the snares of death prevent me. That doesn't mean he's literally in hell. Okay? Hell can be likened to destruction. Hell can be likened unto the grave. And hell can be likened unto a hellish condition on earth as such as captivity. As we've been showing you all of these things. Deuteronomy 32 and 22. A fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn even to the lowest hell. And shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations on the mountains. Okay, because Jake went off. Okay, but Jake wasn't burned forever. Okay, Jake just suffered, all right, judgment by the Lord on earth. 
okay? And when you go into this chapter, real quick, let's see here. I believe this is the Song of Moses. Yeah, he was, this was the Song of Moses, okay? And he was just singing praises unto the Lord, okay? But where, where, where did Moses ever go and show us or warn us of a, a, a place where we would be tormented forever by the God of Hades and these various different gods that we're getting ready to show you? You don't see that, okay? But let's get a few other examples, okay? Um, it is as high as heaven. What can thou do it? Deeper than hell, what can thou know? All right, hell is naked before him, and destruction have no covering, okay? The wicked shall be turned unto hell, and the nations that forget God, okay? So you have to go into the context of the scripture to see exactly what context it is to be used okay but never do we uh, uh have we applied some god of the underworld because satan okay as we know as we'll show you he's in the heavens and he's under full control of the most the most high control satan okay we already read that one Psalms 86 and 13, for great is thy mercy towards me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Was he literally in hell? Okay. Psalms 116 and 3, the sorrows of death can pass me, and the pains of hell have gotten hold on me. This is all that word, sh sheol or sha'awal. Sha okay. Psalms 139 and 8, if I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. All right. Meaning if I'm in a if I'm in a good position on earth, you're there. If I'm in a bad position, you're there. That's not saying that if he's in the heavens, okay, the most high is there. And then if he goes down to the earth, the, 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 the hell where it's burning forever, he's there. No. Okay. Her feet go down to death and her steps take hold onto hell. Meaning if you follow this strange woman, these different philosophies is going to lead you to a bad place on earth. So as we can see, this word hell, okay are only symbolic, all right? And really, it's just the grave. But as we showed you, all right, just like um, here in Isaiah 15 and 14, or 5 and 14, all right, as the scriptures say, therefore, my people are going into captivity. Let's get it. Isaiah 5 and 13, therefore, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell, okay, have enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoiced it shall ascend unto it. So this is speaking of the hellish condition that the Israelites would be in on earth as they were going into captivity. Again, going back, as you can see, it's the same word, okay? And we'll go to a few other examples. Let's go to. Uh, let's go to. Yeah, Isaiah 28 and 15. You yeah, have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell. Are we at agreement? OK. These different philosophies, these different gods. OK, which is going to lead you to destruction. All right, let's get a few more, and then we'll go back to that article. Isaiah 38. Let's start in 10. I said, in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. Okay. Verse 18, for the grave, for, for the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. As he says, he's the God of the living. That they that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth because you're dead. You're not alive praising the Lord. And when you die, we know according to our customs, all right, the dust returns to the earth and the spirit returns unto the most high who made it. Okay. Isaiah 57 and 9, speaking of sellouts, thou wentest to the king with ointment and didst increase thy perfumes and didst send thy messages afar off and didst debase thyself even unto hell. You sold out. You made a covenant with these different nations and gods, which is going to lead to your destruction. That's all that's talking about. Okay, let's just go to uh, Jonah. Okay, Jonah. 
well, Amos 9 and 2, though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them, though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. So are you literally digging into a, a, a place of the underworld where all these spirits are, or are you just digging into the earth? Okay, Jonah 2 and 2, and said, I cried by reason of my affliction. Now, where was Jonah at? Okay. Jonah chapter 2 and 1. Then Jonah prayed unto Yahweh, his God, out of the fish's belly. Okay, he's in the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto Yahweh, and he heard me out of the belly of hell. Okay, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. So was, was Jonah in hell? No. Jonah was in a, a position of difficulty on earth. He was in hell on earth in the form of being inside of a fish's belly. Okay? That's all. That's it. That's all. So when we go into the New Testament and we see this, this term Hades, okay? Acts 2 and 27 says, because thou will not leave my soul in hell, okay? Which he was quoting David in Psalms. And this is Peter speaking, okay, quoting <laughs> quoting himself in his past life. Um, but when you see this word Hades, okay, you have to understand that that was added there. None of the Hebrew Israelite writings of the Old Testament spoke of any god of the underworld or Pluto or, or Hades, okay? And you can see that this particular word is used. Okay, and it was added here as the Bible was translated from the the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, old the the Hebrew and the Greek into the old English. Okay, they were using these terms. Okay, because that was the gods that the Greeks worshipped. So when they, all right, see a word that comes across in the Hebrew to describe uh, a, a grave or destruction or you know a bad position. All right, sometimes you see that they will put Hades, okay? Matthew 11 and 23, and thou Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, speaking of this particular region where, where, where niggas were proud and didn't want to accept Yahweh Shai, shall be brought down to hell, okay? Now, is it going to be brought down to Hades, dealing with Pluto and the God of the other underworld? No, these are the myth and mythologies of these heathen and as the scriptures say learn not the way of the heathen as a matter of fact we'll go back to that let's get the book of uh deuteronomy the 12th chapter deuteronomy the 12th chapter and 29 when the lord thy god shall cut off these nations from before thee whether thou goest to possess them and thou shalt succeedest them and dwell in their land all right, who was there? The Canaanites, all of these other ites, all of these different nations were in the region of the Holy Land. And the Lord, because of the witchcraft and the evil they were doing, had it determined for them to be spewed out. So the true, all right, people of that land can go into that land and set up shop. But what did Jake do? They went there and started following these various different gods. Okay, it says, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before thee and that thou inquire not after their gods saying how did these nations serve their gods and that's exactly what you see happening today Jake wants to serve Yahweh Bashim Yahushai all right by adding these various different fables of the heathen you see and that's 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 a no-no okay that's a no-no so it says, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise, for thou shalt not do unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination of Yahweh, well, to, to Yahweh, which he hated, have they done unto their gods, for even their sons and daughters have they burnt in the fire to their gods. Okay? <laughs> So there you go. And they did a lot of that in the Valley of Hinnom. Okay, which is another word that you'll see associated with hell. Okay, in the Bible. All right. So we weren't supposed to ever 
take the, the, the way that these heathen worship their gods and worship our God the same way. Okay? But as you can see here, it's all symbolism. Because Capernaum were proud. It said, all right, although you're flourishing right now, they were flourishing and were rich. Thou shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee have been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. Meaning they would have repented. All right, but you niggas don't want to hear the word. That's what Yahweh was saying. Matthew 16 and 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, is it talking about the gates of Hades? No, it's speaking of the rulership. All right, that's going to be in rulership in the form of Esau, Edom, the heathen. They're not going to prevail against the church of Yahweh when it's all said and done. Okay, so we can see, um, yep, uh, second, second Acts 2 and 31, after seeing this before, okay, and this is proof, because when we read Acts 2 and 27, it says, because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither, and that word is Hades, neither will I suffer mine holy one, to thine holy one, to see corruption. Verse 31, after he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Yahweh Shai. So he was speaking of Yahweh Shai. Now was Yahweh Shai in literal the underground being, you know, where, where Hades and all of these gods were? No, he was in the grave. All right. And he rose after the third day. Okay. That his soul was not left in the grave, but it says hell, Hades, neither did his flesh see corruption. And again, that word is uh, uh, Hades. See that? Which, as we showed you, that's associated with another god. The god of the other world, underworld. Okay, but there's more. Okay, there's more. Okay. In Greek mythology, Hades was the firstborn son of the, the of Titans, Cronus, Rhea. Uh, he had three older sisters. So this, this is bugged out. We ain't got to read no more. Pluto was the Roman god of death. See that? Pluto was the Roman god of death in the underworld. Realms, the god of death in the underworld. These are Greco-Roman ideologies, but where did they get it from? Okay, where did the Greeks and the Romans get these various different gods? Okay? This is uh, hell, the Norse of the god of death, the underworld. I don't know exactly what kingdom all right, the Norse god of death, but this is just showing you the different gods of death. Kali. All right, Kali. All right, the 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 Hindu god of death. Okay? The the the, the Indians and all of them believe in this BS. But never in the Bible were we to associate some 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 sort of god of the underworld with death and eternal torment. As a matter of fact, when you go into the Bible and you type in Satan, okay, in uh, First Chronicles twenty-one and one, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Satan is a spirit, okay, who dwells on the left hand side of the Most High in the heavens. On the right hand, it's Yahweh Shai. On the left hand, is Satan because, as a matter of fact. Let's get Isaiah real quick. 45 and 17. Or is it 7? Yep. The Most High says this. I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. Okay? And going back here to where we were, if you just type in Satan... Okay, never was he some god of the underworld. Okay, Job 1 and 6. Now, when there was a day, this is in the heavens. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahweh, and Satan came also among them. So Satan is in the heavens, man. Okay, when we, when we uh, read the book of Ephesians, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. All right, which Satan has a seed on the earth. Okay, and Satan is used as a spirit 
which he has his various different spirits as well, to go throughout the earth putting demons on people to do bad things or to mess with people, to jack people up in certain instances, man. Okay, seeking whom he can devour, seeking whom he can sift in his mind. It's a constant battle every day with Satan in your mind. All right? But Satan ain't under underground, all right, waiting to receive particular souls to torment them forever because we know that when 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 <laughs> when people die, all right, they go back to the father. All right? When you look up all of the kings of Judah, and uh, 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 Ephraim, both uh, southern and northern kingdom, when they died, they all slept with their fathers, no matter how wicked they were, okay? Because the spirit, the, the flesh returns to the earth, and the, the spirit returns into the, fa the, the father who gave it. Solomon slept with his fathers. Jeroboam, wicked self, slept with his fathers. Rehoboam, wicked self, he wouldn't slept with his fathers. Abijam. He wouldn't slept with his fathers. Asa, he did good, slept with his fathers. And on and on, Ahab, as much wicked and evil as he did, he re this spirit returned to the father. All spirits return to the father when you die and your flesh returns to the, the, the earth. That's what worms and maggots are for. Okay, because they aid in the process, okay, of you going back to the earth. Fungus. That all of these things aid in you going back to the earth. Okay? So, Jehu slept with his father. Jehoaz slept with his fathers. So, I mean, we can keep going on and on. Manasseh, which he did super evil. Child sacrifice, all kind of wickedness. Okay? But he repented. Okay? But he, he, he slept with his fathers. Okay? So we can go on and on. Nowhere do you hear about, you know, even Saul slept with his fathers. Nowhere do you hear about any spirit, whether they did wicked or righteous on earth, going to hell. As a matter of fact, um, let's get the book of Job as he describes the spiritual realm. Um, let's see here. Job. Job. Boom. Job is describing the spirit world. Okay? Job's lament. Uh, Job chapter 3 and 11. Why died I not from the womb? Okay? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why, or why the breast that I should suck? Alright? He was like, why was I laid on my mother's lap? Why does she nurse me at her breast? Like, so I wouldn't be alive to go, be going through this hell that I'm experiencing. Okay. It says, for now, you know, if I died, basically, for now, should I have uh, lain still and been quiet? Okay. I would have slept and then I had been at rest. Let's read it in the NLT. Had I died at birth, I would now be at peace. I would be sleep <laughs> and at rest. All right, let's re keep reading. I will rest with the world's kings, prime ministers who, who, who built, who, who, whose great buildings now lie in ruins. Okay, I will rest with princes rich in gold whose palaces were filled with silver. But when they died, they all went and returned to the father. Okay, it says, why wasn't I buried like a stillborn child, like a baby who never lives to see the light? Okay, like all of those aborted babies. Those fetuses, all right, they never get the chance to see light. Those spirits just return back to the father because, you know, at conception, okay, the, the light sparks. And that's basically a life being given into that seed that's going to be nourished by the egg for a period of nine months. Okay, or ten, sometime ten months. If you're following the lunar calendar, it could, it could be ten. But then what? The baby's born, boom, life. Thou renewest the face of the earth. But he's he's saying, look. If I didn't come out of the womb or I'd be good. OK, never see the light. It says for in death, the wicked cause no trouble. All right. And the weary are at rest. All right. There, as it says in verse 17 in the King James, there the wicked cease from trouble. So even the wicked spirits go up to the heavens. OK, <laughs> the prisoners are at rest 
they hear not the voice of the oppressor. You're in the spirit. You're at rest when you're in the spirit world. The small and great are there and a servant is free from his master. See that? So he said, wherefore is light given to him that is in misery and life unto the bitter soul? Because he was in a hellish condition on earth, man. So again, when you type in Satan in the Bible, okay, never do we hear about any of these gods or goddesses that these heathen deal with, okay? Satan is subject to the most high in the Bible, okay? Job, verse uh, one and seven. And Yahweh said unto Satan, whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down. All right. And did not Peter tell you that your adversary Satan or the devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour? OK, that's why the Lord sent angels. All right. On the right hand side to keep the elect in their way. It's a spiritual war. OK, so, I mean, we can go to other scriptures speaking of Satan. All right. Boom. With Zechariah, the high priest, he saw Satan standing at his right hand. <laughs> oh, man. Interesting. All right. Because there was a point, there was going to be a point where Joshua, the high priest, had, all right, a, a, a Satan on him. Okay. But as you keep reading the story, all right, there's going to come a high priest that's going to forgive the sins. You see what I'm saying? And that's ultimately how it's shy. All right. So even when we go into the scriptures, Satan, which is the adversary. OK, the adversary, Satan is the adversary, man. If Satan be rising against Satan. So we see these 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 different terms. Um, let's see what I wanted to do. Let's see here. Romans 16 and 20. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly and in the grace of the lord god shall be with you aman all right yahweh Hamashiach. so satan in the scriptures is nowhere ever all right synonymous with the god of the underworld now in revelation okay in the book of revelation 2 20 and 2 okay we get a history lesson which i'm going to do a lesson on revelation 20 lord willing um, Revelation 22 And I saw an angel come down from heaven Having the key of the bottomless pit And a great chain in his hand Okay Now where did the Romans rule They ruled in a particular region in the earth man Okay this is talking about The Lord getting ready to take down A nation on the planet earth The bottomless pit Is a place on earth Okay And we're going to prove it to you and laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. Now, who is the dragon? If we go line up online, precept upon precept, well, Revelation, the 12th chapter, we get insight to the dragon, the red dragon. OK, the red dragon is synonymous with the Roman Empire who were in power at the time, which someone of the Roman Empire. All right. Or one who was in league with Rome, but he was an Edomite. Herod tried to put our Lord and Savior to death. And there appeared, all right, Revelation 12 and 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and his tail drew down the uh, third part of the stars of heaven. Okay, what is that talking about? That's talking about how Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who, who, who were still in Jerusalem, were in subject to the Romans. That's the great red dragon. They ruled on earth. This ain't talking about under the earth. Okay? And as you keep reading, they tried to put... All right, that that empire, okay, one who was in league with them, okay, Herod, who was an Edomite, okay, tried to do what? Put our Lord and Savior to death. He slew a bunch of Israelite children. That's what this is talking about. So that red dragon, okay, is speaking of the Roman Empire, okay? Now, when you get Revelation 20, there was a point where Rome fell. The Western Roman Empire fell. Okay? So I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit, meaning he has the ability to, to, to take one down, 
to lift one up. Okay, what does the Lord say in Daniel? The uh, the uh, he 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 put it down one and set it up another. Let's get that real quick. He put it down one. I forget where it's written. He put it down one and set it up another. I know it's in. Is it Daniel? Okay, give me one second. I'm gonna look it up real quick. He put it down one and set it up another. I know that's how it's. Here we go. Psalm 75 and 6. For promotion cometh neither from east nor from west nor from south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and sets up another. Okay? So the Most High through Yahweh Shai, okay, and the angels are able to de or determines who rules for a period of time and who doesn't man that's all this is talking about so what did what did this angel do with this with this chain okay which a chain represents what let's read this word chain this is on earth okay halesis or halusis a chain bond by which the body or any parts of the hands or feet is bound Meaning a particular nation is getting ready to go down, go into captivity. Okay? Right now, there's a chain right on us. Meaning we can't rise. We can't rule. We're not sovereign until the Lord, okay, sends his only begotten son to, to loose us out of the chains of darkness, this flesh, and out of this man's rulership. Okay? So, going back here, and he laid hold on the dragon... The ancient Roman Empire, that old serpent, the Edomites, which is called the devil and Satan and bound them a thousand years. Now you have an individual that say, I believe this is talking about the dark ages. So you mean to tell me that Satan literally went into a bottomless pit where all of these wicked spirits dwelt? The, the, the ancient Romans went down into a pit where, where spirits dwelt? No, he, he brought them to a lower state on the earth, man. And for a period of a thousand years... Okay, if you look up how long was the Byzantine Empire, all right, how long was it from the time, all right, uh, the Western Roman Empire fell into the Renaissance period? It was a period of a thousand years, okay? And he laid hold on the dragon, the Roman Empire, that old serpent, which is called the devil and Satan. This is not talking about the spiritual demon Satan. This is speaking of those who rule through his energy. As a matter of fact, okay, because those same people are ruling today. Second Thessalonians 2, okay? In 8, which Paul told you in verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Who was ruling at that time Paul wrote this letter? The Romans. Only he who will now let until he uh, will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Yahweh the Lord, okay, through his only begotten Son, through the prophets, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power, signs, and miracles. Does not it talk about the miracles that this devil would do in Revelation, the 13th chapter? Okay, so yes, he rules through the energy and authority of Satan, but it's not talking about Satan himself. Okay, Satan was never bound into a, 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 a cell for a thousand years, man. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. So there was a point where the Edomite nation, as we'll get deeper into it in a, a, a lesson when I actually go into Revelation 20, there was a point where the Edomites were looked down upon, they were chased, they were, they were, and a lot of them were chased up into the Caucasus Mountains. All of this happened in a particular region of the earth known as the bottomless pit. And the pit can be known as a, a, a region in earth According to what we read about in a uh, 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 in the book of uh, let's get it, chosen the one pit. Let's see here, uh, 
I know it's in the book of uh, I'll do it here Second Edges 5 and 24 And of all the lands of the world Thou hast chosen thee one pit And of all the flowers thereof one lily Okay now what Jake will say Is prove that this is speaking of The area of Europe Well where Okay Where did the Roman Empire fail Where did they fall Where were they taken down <laughs> Okay in Europe all right, where were the Edomites chased up into? It, 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 it's a various point. They would look down upon, man. And you had so-called black deities worshipped. Jake was ruling for a period of a thousand years. Can you believe that? And we have the proof. We have the artifacts. We have the pictures. We have the history. We've done ver various videos on it, man. Okay? And after that a thousand year period came the renaissance, the rebirth of who? The Roman Empire. Okay? Esau came out of the caves. All right. And we'll go into it in a whole nother video. But as we're showing you. This ain't talking about, OK, Satan being put into a pit or even the Edomites falling into a pit, because how can you say in one breath that this is talking about uh, the dark ages and then say that the bottomless pit is a place where evil spirits dwell? So Esau went into a place where evil spirits dwell or was Esau on the earth losing Uga Uga? In, in the caves eating flesh and being a uh, the degenerate that he really is that's what happened man and and when you jump to verse seven because four through six is speaking of the kingdom of heaven so you have to jump to verse seven and after the a thousand years are expired satan shall be loose from his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth which he's been doing which is going to lead to gog and magog to gather them together for battle OK, this is speaking of the renaissance, the rebirth. So even here, the, the, the Bible is using symbolism to describe things on earth. Never do we deal with this garbage here of some God of the underworld. And see, as you can see, this goes back to Egypt and we're in Egypt again. So we see these various different gods uh, 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 back again. And who's who's bringing them out? Jake. Israelites. You see, Anubis, okay, the god of the underworld, that was in Egypt. Who did, who, did, who, who did the Greeks and Romans get their gods from? Egypt, Babylon, right? So, <laughs> fun fact, the Egyptians likely created Anubis after witnessing jackals and dogs dig up, dig up graves. Anubis is a striking Egyptian god. His black cannon face is the, the, the most recognizable in mythology, yada, yada, yada. A Mayan god of death, which we know they went off. All right, the Israel, Jake going off, getting into these different gods. The Aztecs got into the god of the underworld, going off. The Japanese, okay, so the... the, the Apophis, the, the 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 Egyptian death god. There you go. So these, where where in the Bible, okay, <laughs> do we read about some god of the underworld? Even with this story here that they use in Isaiah the fourteenth chapter, that's speaking of a man. Isaiah fourteen is talking about the Israelites being freed from captivity. Taking up a, a taunt against the king of Babylon. Now, who's the king of Babylon? The Edomites. They're the one who's going to rule this 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 Babylon the Great. He's broken the the scepter of the rulers on the earth, on the earth. So you have to follow the whole narrative of the chapter to understand who Lucifer is as we we creep up on that. So Isaiah fourteen and four: Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say how the oppressor has ceased. All right, verse five, the Lord have broken the staff of the wicked who smote the people. OK, and the whole earth is going to be at rest. OK, this man went and cut down all of the trees. OK, hell from beneath is uh, 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 moved from thee to meet thee at that coming, meaning you are getting ready to fall from heaven. Right. You're getting ready to meet hell. That's what's coming for you, Edomites. And hell is it could be captivity. It could be the grave. 
It could be a hellish condition on earth. It could be symbolic of fire. We, the Israelites, never took hold to some goddamn God under the earth. That's a heathenistic uh, 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 thing, man. Okay? So, it says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirred up the dead for thee, and even all the chief ones of the earth have raised up from their uh, thrones and all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Out thou become weak as us? Meaning you're falling from your grace. And that's already happening. All of the heathen nations are cursing you Edomites out. Thy prop is brought down to the grave. The noise of your vows. Okay, your, your doctrine. The worm is spread under thee. And the worms cover thee. Meaning you are getting ready to fall. You're getting ready to lose. All right. You're getting ready to be destroyed. And we know prophetically how this happens. Via the return of Yahweh Shai. But before that, war. The different nations, all right, including his own uh, uh, ally, shooting missiles on him, man. Then it goes to how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground? Now, when you look this term Lucifer up, Hayalal, okay, light bearer, the shining one, the morning star. Now, who's the true morning star? Yahweh Shai. Esau has tried to. X out Yahweh Shai and put himself in the form of the savior or the chosen one or the, the enlightened one. The king of Babylon, figuratively, and Satan, which we know Satan, okay, it's a spiritual demon Satan, but there's a, a nation on earth who's going to come and do his works. And the proof that this ain't talking about, because this is the only time that word Lucifer is in the Bible. No other scripture talks about Lucifer, but Lucifer is the myth of 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 the god of the underworld who was kicked out of heaven first of all nothing in the heavens is doing anything outside of what the lord wants it to do okay there's no spirit in heaven going against the plan of the most high he wouldn't be omnipotent is not he is not the most high omnipotent meaning nothing operates outside of his power so how was satan kicked out of heaven for doing uh, 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 I guess he was over music as they say These are all myths Where in the Bible was Satan over the music uh, 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 Program in the heavens And got kicked out For doing evil That's No the program the, the Lord wants him to do evil He's set up for the purpose of evil Because the Lord is not dealing with a false balance Alright so it's talking about how this man will want to exalt himself above the most high and do all of this. But when he falls right here, verse 15, yet thou should be brought down to hell in the sides of the pit, meaning you're going to be in a low condition on earth. They that narrowly see thee shall look upon thee and consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms again? More symbolism, more allegoric talk. Okay. Nowhere do we find in the Bible well, we take the, these various different gods, okay, and, 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 and we were warned about some damn god of the underworld. No, that's Greco-Egyptian, Babylonian, Greco-Roman garbage. Okay, so I just wanted to go through that, okay, and go through these various different uh, concepts. You have Hades. We went through Sha Sha Sha'al. We already showed you Gehenna, all right, and danger of hell, fire. Gehenna Okay Gehenna Ge Let's see Hell Yep Alright Yahweh Shai talked about You would be in danger of hell fire Now when you look up that word hell Again Alright And the Lord just got the spirit on, on us Beating this point home Cause we know a lot of you Israelites man Those fables sound good to you and you be mad at your baby daddy or your baby mama. And you like, I want that bitch to burn forever or that nigga to burn forever because your feelings are hurt. But the Lord ain't dealing with that. Now, judgment is coming to people on earth. The fire that Peter, that Peter tells you is coming to the earth. The fire, according to the Bible, is coming to the earth. It's not going to be no underground old place in heaven where fire is going to just be tormenting people forever and ever in the God of the underworld. No, that is 
a, 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 a cunningly devised fable that we should stay away from, man. Gehenna is that word Yahweh Shai used. And again, that was slang. Okay. Hell is a place of future punishment called Gehenna. All right. That was originally called the Valley of Hinnom, south of Jerusalem. Okay. Just like we say through, which that's a word, <laughs> you know, uh, me and my uh, best friend at the time came up with in like 1998, 99. That's made it all the way to the truth. It's it's meant as a figure as a figurative allegory to somebody who just ain't got it through. You finished. You out of there. So Yahweh Shai and the Jews, they they took this particular place that was south of Jerusalem, known as a place where a uh, 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 burning and evil was going on, and burning trash and the burning of dead bodies, wicked sacrifices. They took that and 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 and, and pretty much applied it to the destruction to come. It was an allegory. It was slang where filth and dead animals of the city were cast out and burned a fit symbol of the wicked and their future destruction. The future destruction of the wicked in the Bible, okay, is the, the fire coming from war and the return of the chariots, man. Okay, fire is going to come from his chariots, man. Okay. Boom, yep, Isaiah 66 and 5, man. For behold, the Lord will come with his chariots like a whirlwind, all right, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And then, of course, we know nuclear war is going to happen. So I just wanted to touch on those uh, concepts. Hopefully I will edify on to the next. Shalom.